question. So this is this did did this touch a nerve with you, sir? Oh yeah, reparations is not feasible at all economically. I mean, you talk about the Ukrainians; they received a hundred billion. That's forty times less than what your what forty trillion claim is. 20, 20 trillion. Twenty trillion. Yeah, that's not feasible at all. I mean, we saw inflation these last three years. Could you imagine if you guys received your reparations? It would destroy our country's economy. How so? Did you not see how prices went up almost 200% in some areas? Well, sir, the thing is that money that was sent to the Ukraine, that doesn't circulate in our economy. So, yeah, that's a problem. That's some money that doesn't recirculate. Reparations money given to Foundation of Black Americans, that is going to stimulate the economy because we're going to bounce that money in our internal economy. That's going to be phenomenal for the economy. You're not giving it to a be the opposite. The reason we have inflation is because there's too many dollars floating around. So at least with the Ukrainian money, which I don't support at all, at least that's being sent abroad, which doesn't circulate as quickly back into the American economy. That's Could you imagine how that's much? That's not a good thing. That's not a good thing. No, 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 no. We're not talking about printing new money. We're talking about money that's already here, sir. What are you talking about? There's no, tri been... there's no 20 trillion here for you guys to get. Where is yes, that going to yes, come from? It's going to have to be printed. Yes, no, 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 no. From where? No. no, the government has it. Some of that money from the, the Ukraine. Let's start off with a few of them billions. Right? We could start off with a few billion you, and work our way up to the 20 trillion. Right? You just said you went 20 trillion. Do you know how far away 20 trillion let's is start from 100 with, billion? Let's start with the 30 billion. Let's start there. We can we can do increments. It don't have to be at once. We can do increments. We can start with the 30 billion. You already received more than that in welfare every year. No, 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 because your community gets most of the welfare. So we're we're old double. Your community gets welfare and you you had all the benefits and privileges. You weren't denied anything based on race. Why are any people in your community on welfare? Well, logistically, do you know how per capita works? Uh, no, don't start that per speaking? capita. Don't start. No, no, no. Because raw numbers show that your community are the majority of the people on welfare. Why are any of your people on welfare? Terry, if you have 100 apples and 30 of them are rotten versus if you have four apples and three of them are rotten, well, which pal are you more scared of? The one where 75% is rotten or the former pal? Okay, if you... Right, so Tyreek is talking to some suspected white supremacists, right, about reparations and suspected white supremacists is saying how it would be bad for the economy and inflation. Then he goes off on some old wild hundred apples analogy and Tyreek busts him right in the head with the fucking apples. <laughs> so, yeah, this is one of Tyreek's wittiest comebacks yet. Listen to this shit. gets welfare and you you had all the benefits and privileges you weren't denied anything based on race why are any people in your community on welfare well logistically do you know how per capita works uh, no don't start that per speaking? capita don't start no 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 because raw numbers show that your community are the majority of the people on welfare why are any of your people on welfare Terry, if you have 100 apples and 30 of them are rotten versus if you have four apples and three of them are rotten, well, which pal are you more scared of? The one where 75% is rotten or the former pal? Okay, if you had... All right, so Tariq is holding this debate with at this point, you don't even got to say suspected white supremacist. Let's just call him a white supremacist, right? And the conversation is about who is on welfare more, blacks or whites. So the white boy tries to pull out a per capita stat. Well, you know, blacks per capita are, are 
And Tariq is like, no, fuck that per capita shit. In totality, it's your people who are on welfare the most. Then Tariq said, yes, our people are oppressed. It makes sense that we're poor. We're redlined. But you, Mr. White Man, you have a million dollars worth of whiteness. What's your excuse? Then the white boy comes back with, and now this is a comparison between white people and black people. Using a pile of apples. Listen closely. He said, which pile of apples would you trust more? A pile of 100 apples and 30 are bad, 30%. Or a pile of 4 apples and 3 are bad, 75%. So what this white supremacist just basically said was 70% of white people are good people. But 75% of black people are bad bad people so three-fourths of black people are rotten 75 percent and 70 percent of white people are good 70 out of 30 so that means according to this white supremacist all black teachers black lawyers black doctors black police officers black bus drivers black truck drivers black nurses black preachers black therapists are all rotten. These aren't good humans. These aren't good citizens. These aren't good Americans. So here's your white supremacist mass shooters over the last five years. Remember, 70% of white folk is good. So what he's saying is your average white supremacist is better than your law-abiding black American. I would love to know where he pulled this information from. Where did you come up with the metric that 70% of white folk are good and 75% black folk are bad? So now the entire race of black folk is seen under the lens of young thug. So now the entire black race is drill rappers. So now the entire black race is sexy red. And Glorilla. In order for 75% of black people to be bad. And only. Th one out of four. 25% being good. That means that the entire race. Of black Americans. Is drill rappers. And porn stars. And then what's crazy. This white boy that's saying 75% of black people are bad. Has never been attacked by a black person. Has never had a fight with a black person. Has never had an argument with a black person. Has probably never worked at a job with a black person. So this entire ideology comes from TV and news clips. But they'll sit there and tell you that the Jewish ran media is a bunch of propaganda. But when it comes to black Americans, it's not propaganda. It's the truth. Right? It's most of the welfare. So we're we're old double. Your community gets welfare and you you had all the benefits and privileges. You weren't denied anything based on race. Why are any people in your community on welfare? Well, logistically, do you know how per capita works? Uh, no, don't start that per speaking? capita. Don't start. No, no, no. Because raw numbers show that your community are the majority of the people on welfare. Why are any of your people on welfare? Terry, if you have 100 apples and 30 of them are rotten versus if you have four apples and three of them are rotten, well, which pal are you more scared of? The one where 75% is rotten or the former pal? Okay, if you had 10 apples that were hung and lynched and Jim Crow, and then you had 90 apples that were given all types of privilege and, privileges and benefits, then why are the 90 apples on welfare that were given benefits and privileges? Why are any of them on welfare? Gotcha, bitch. Nigga, say what you want about Tyreek, nigga. <laughs> yeah, 
so much for your hundred apples, thirty rotten, and and three out of four apples rotten bullshit, right? Yeah. Like I said, where the fuck does he get seventy percent of white folk as good folk? Have you not seen the news? <laughs> yeah, so Tyreek responded to that apple shit and said, Alright, so if you got ten apples that were hung, lynched, and Jim Crowed versus ninety apples that were given all the privileges and benefits, then why are any of those ninety apples on welfare? Do 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 stuck them right right that's the system the system is designed for black people to be on welfare right the system is designed for black people to be in poverty the system of redlining and mass incarceration and racism you know y'all gotta remember yo there's not a lot of daniel patrick moynihan's walking around here y'all he was a special breed you understand for him to be up in the white house Around all them white devils. Daniel Patrick Moynihan being a devil himself. He still had the humanity to see reality. When it came to black people. Right? That's why Daniel Patrick Moynihan is the patron saint. Of Bunker TV. Yes. Besides other names I won't mention. But yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you know. White supremacists only see the reality when it benefits them, right? You you might have a what a, a Patrick Bet David or Vivek Ramaswamy, right? They'll run around here saying, "Well, you know, the policies is what messed up the black community. It was the policies, you know. If you look in the seventies, the black community was the most married, the most employed, blah blah blah. But then you know the policies, but they never say what those policies are." Those were white supremacist policies, right? Of redlining, mass incarceration, and racial discrimination, right? Then flooding black neighborhoods with millions of unvetted illegal immigrants and made them compete for jobs and housing, right? And gentrified black Americans out of their own neighborhoods. We have black stores up, but then if you move in a majority of Hispanic people, they're not going to go to the black stores anymore. So then the black stores are going to phase out. So that's why there's no more black businesses anymore. When there was just black folk feeding black folk, living amongst black folk, there was black stores. But once you started gentrifying our neighborhoods and bringing in people of a bigger populace than us in our own neighborhoods, well, you know, the face changed. So did the billboards. But yeah, the white supremacists will see it only when it's convenient, you know. They'll get on CNN, they'll get on Fox, and they'll sit there. You know what, well, the black community was the policies that, you know, da 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 in the single-parent households. What were those policies? Nobody ever says what those policies were. Because if you were to mention what those policies were, you would have to admit that there was a white supremacist agenda in those policies. We know all too well why black Americans are behind in most of the quality of life metrics that they love to use and weaponize against us. Or why y'all at the bottom of this? Why y'all at the bottom of this? Shut the fuck up. Y'all niggas is out here doing documentaries on redlining. Y'all doing documentaries on mass incarceration. Then y'all sitting there looking at black folks saying, well, why you fucked up? Uh, uh, the, the redlining documentary you just did in the mass incarceration video you just did you you didn't look at your own documentary and y'all have to remember that the average rank and file white boy does not understand redlining mass incarceration if it doesn't affect them they do not study it as a white boy you're not studying redlining it does not affect you all right and then even if we did give them the information they would develop a cognitive dissonance around it because then what you in essence told them is every advantage they have over black folk is artificial that the gains that they have over us are artificial that they have an unfair advantage right and they don't want to hear that right they want to believe that they are better than black folk by every metric naturally they don't want to hear that it's artificial 
So they would reject it anyway. And then now we're talking in a more nationalistic tone. Back to that Black Panther shit. We ain't talking that we just black or African-American now. We're talking about we foundational black American. So that's a return to the 60s and the 70s talk. But now we're being gaslit by everyone. Now we're xenophobic, right? After the last 30 years of being teased, and especially now recently on social media, we're teased as being the civil rights people, right? Oh, you black Americans, y'all the civil rights people. Y'all got civil rights for everybody but yourself. So now you're being mass incarcerated. Now you're being gentrified and ethnically cleansed. And now you look at you, you crying about reparations. Right. Now we're xenophobic. Now that we realize we've been jerked, we've been bamboozled, we got tricked. Now we're xenophobic. Because everybody wants to continue to take advantage of foundational black Americans. So. Yeah, but I know y'all want to hear what was the white boy's answer to that question. And that question Tyreek's rebuttal was if you got 10 apples that were lynched and hung and Jim Crow and you got 90 apples that had all the benefits and the privileges. Why are any of those 90 apples on welfare? Terry, if you have 100 apples and 30 of them are rotten versus if you have four apples and three of them are rotten, well, which pal are you more scared of? The one where 75% is rotten or the former pal? Okay, if you had 10 apples that were hung and lynched and Jim Crowed, and then you had 90 apples that were given all types of privilege and privileges and benefits, then why are the 90 apples on welfare that were given benefits and privileges? Why are any of them on welfare? Because there's no oranges, but I don't see what that no, has to do with no, 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 the fact that reparations no, 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 black, no, 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 because you mentioned you mentioned welfare. And the majority of welfare people in your community, black people are, of course, I'm surprised most of us are not on welfare, which most of us are not. It's understandable that black people will be on welfare because we've been denied resources repeatedly. Your community has not. You've been given a green light for everything. You've had a Jim Crow policy called white supremacy that gave you privileges and benefits. So why are any of you on welfare? Well, maybe I should have used watermelons instead for you to understand the analogy with per capita. But the reason why we have, well, maybe I should have used watermelons instead for you to understand the. Well, maybe I should have used watermelons instead. For, well, maybe I should have used watermelons instead for you to understand the analogy with per capita. But yeah, so no need to any longer call him suspected white supremacist, right? Okay, so um. So Tyreek beats the white supremacist at his own game and outwits him, asks him a question that he can't answer. So then he resorts to, oh, my bad. I should have used watermelons in my analogy for per capita. Question, why would so you're calling in on this man's channel or you're getting on this man's Instagram, whatever it is to debate him because you see people lined up to debate him right why would you call into a person's channel and debate them on anything if you don't think they understand something as rudimentary as per capita explain that to me if you don't think this nigga understands something as basic as per capita why would you even call him to debate him on anything he's already a fool right so you mean to tell me a man that is a millionaire does not understand per capita? You mean to tell me a man that is a historian and has does doc documentaries does not understand per capita? A man that has been on, uh, I don't know, CNN, MSNBC, Fox, whatever he's been on. A man that has debated white supremacists. A man that has debated coon black conservatives. You mean to tell me you don't think he understands per capita? Now, do you think this is a lack of respect for Tyreek Nasheed's intelligence 
Or do you think Tyreek Nasheed is a proxy for all black Americans? That he thinks overall all black Americans don't understand what per capita is. I'll go with the latter. And I commend Tyreek for being able to handle that insult and letting it bounce off his shoulders because that would have set me to fuck off. I'd have been like, the fuck you mean watermelons? No, use mayonnaise jars. Well, maybe I should have used watermelons instead for you to understand the analogy with per capita, but... The reason why per capita don't mean anything. I'm talking about if the the millions of people in your community on welfare. What does that say about your community? But the difference is, is that we're funding our own people. Without us, you guys wouldn't have any welfare at all. Have you not seen the stat where we contribute about seven hundred fifty thousand dollars per lifetime to our uh, total budget? But you guys, you guys take I think what two hundred thousand dollars. In net negative, that's you're just making up stuff right now. That don't even make sense. No, what no, you that, said. that makes zero sense. We're taxpayers. It makes total not, sense. Not, no, no, no. And not you, only are we the taxpayers, and you not take only, more than what you contribute. No, that's called white supremacy. We were the ones who built this whole nation for free, and then y'all came and took all the resources and wealth. What you're doing is projecting, sir. All right, so the white supremacist said that in a white person's lifetime, they contribute $750,000 to the system, but a black person in their lifetime takes 200000 from the system. Well, sir, that's what redlining, mass incarceration, racism, and discrimination do. It makes you a burden to the system. But the white supremacist that is in charge would rather for blacks to be a burden than a threat. So when you ask, well, you know, what does it profit us to hold black people back? Didn't have to take care of them anyway, because you would rather us be a burden than a threat. And a threat is a man with a family, with a business, with a home, with generational wealth. All this other shit you talking about is a tax write off with fiat money. That's you're just making up stuff right now. That don't even make sense. No, what no, you it, said. that makes zero sense. We're taxpayers. It makes total not, sense. Not, no, no, no. And not you, only are we the taxpayers, and you not take only, more than what you contribute. No, that's called white supremacy. We were the ones who built this whole nation for free, and then y'all came and took all the resources and wealth. What you're doing is projecting, sir. That's a projection. What you're doing, y'all took a hundred percent of the wealth. We 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 did all the labor for nothing, and then your community came and took 100% of the wealth and you're talking about what we take so if it were not for Wait. us if it were not for us you would Wait, still we... be you would still be over there in Ireland um begging for a potato and some earthworm stew all right y'all came did you and start ate building the country we started when did you building, start building the country we started building the country in the 1500s how come you didn't start building it before we came we were. There were communities around the Americas that were TPs relatively don't count. Advanced. Come on, mud huts and teepees don't count. Not all of them were mud huts and teepees. In fact, when some of the Spanish explorers went into... No, I disagree. Mud huts and teepees do count. We cannot hold people from a thousand years ago up to the same standard of what we live today. Also, because they didn't have high rise apartment buildings. They weren't civilized. Right. That's bullshit. The people that were there were civilized in their own way and they were limited by technology. So, yes, things were made out of mud. And guess what? Mud became hardened brick. So so don't give me that bullshit that just because they weren't there and didn't have a, a metropolis that it can't be considered a civilization. That's bullshit. That's just the white man trying to call other people savages. Southern and Central America, they saw very advanced cities with mosques and other advanced amenities. So it wasn't teepees and huts all over the place. Wait, are we talking about the Americas? Yes, we're talking about the Americas, sir. There weren't teepees and huts everywhere. You had some advanced there mosques. There were no mosques America. in America. Yes, there were. There were no mosques. There were mosques. 
then why did the why did certain Spanish explorers say that there were mosques? Why did Columbus write in his diary that he saw a mosque in Cuba? Huh? Three, come on! There's no mosque in America. Then you why, heard then story. Why did, you should, then why did the white so then why did the white explorers say that? Okay, if your civilization was so built, how are you? Why did okay? You you didn't you didn't explain because I'm telling you what some of the Spanish explorers said. They said they saw mosques and other Moorish buildings here. And also, why did they bring Islamic translators? Or not, I won't say Islamic because they Christianized them, but they brought black people who could speak Hebrew and Arabic specifically to be translators. Why did they do that? I think you're lost. We're talking about the Americas, correct? United yes. States. That's what I'm talking about. Constitution. I'm talking about the America. You said what was built before. I'm still talking about the Americas, what was in the Americas. And I'm telling you. Where were from, these mosques? Um, somewhere down in Central America. Columbus said he saw one in Cuba in his own diary. They brought people like Estevanico, the black Moor who could speak Arabic. They brought another Moor to Canada, Mateo da Costa, who could speak all types of different languages. So they were bringing in these people who could speak Arabic and Hebrew for a reason. So why was why do you think they were doing that? Are you sure you aren't confusing like domes of landfill with the little uh, mosque things? Because there are no mosques in the Americas. That's just made up. Well, why did your European brethren make that up because I'm I'm getting from what they were saying. Why why did they make that up? I don't know where you see this. I mean, where do I look up to see about these mythical mosques? Look up the Columbus. Americas? Look up look up Columbus's diary. All right. Look up Columbus's diary. He talks about seeing a mosque structure in Cuba when they landed in Cuba. So, do you not believe that there if were these mosques? Well, where okay. are they now? Sir, where are they now? Why don't they exist today? Sir, and this is like hundreds and centuries, years later. So a lot of those... You not see the Colosseum? That survived thousands of years. Well, there ain't nobody going up there to try to rebuild nothing up there. They just left the ruins up there. And they never really rebuilt Rome into some big extravaganza like that. The only thing popping in Rome is the tourism. People come to see the rubble. So that's not a flex, sir. That means that they never got their sir, shit. If you're a well-traveled man, I'm uh -huh. sure if you've gone to Europe, you've gone to Scotland, you've seen the castles, you've seen the fortresses, and then you've uh -huh. also gone to Africa, and there's no withstanding architecture compared to the, European because the British, yeah, that the is British withstanding. British. Yeah, because the British tore everything up in Africa. When the British came, they first the Arabs tore up a lot of stuff, and then the British came and tore up a lot of stuff, and they kept re-tearing things up. Even when they colonized things and black people got their independence, out of spite, they said, okay, we'll leave, but we're going to destroy these freeways, the buildings, the infrastructure. Some places even were so petty, they took the toilet paper out of buildings. That's how petty they were. They make these people start all the way over. All right. So what's what's wrong with your community? What what's wrong with these people? Oh, what's wrong with your community? What is this Majora? Are you guys doing another identity? What is it? Native American? No, no, that's not that, this month? No, no, no. That's called our that's the spirit that we have that you know, we have a connection to to God that you don't have. Um, that's why you guys always try to latch on to us all the time, because you have no connection to the most high at all. Um many of the white supremacists are the embodiment of of, of evil, and you know it. And we have a, the most a God, violent group in America. And, and we have a God spirit that you guys can't tap into. And we call it Mojara. You have a thievery spirit. That's why you steal all the iPhones in your nearest sir, neighborhoods. Sir, nobody has stolen more than the white supremacists, sir. Nobody. You guys steal whole continents and resources from everybody. Nobody's more violent than a white supremacist, sir. Yeah, I notice a lot of white supremacists get on here on social media and be projecting with that bullshit like black people are the global bastion of everything that is evil. You know, these white supremacists want you to only remember modern times. They only want you to see two years in the past at a time. Right. Or, or, or the last five years of what they so-called call inner city, i.e. black on black crime. That's the only crimes on this planet that exist to the white supremacists. Forget all of their atrocities, right? All the wars and 
the Tuskegee experiments they did on other people, the colonization, the ethnic cleansings, the genocides of the Native Americans, right? It's just black on black crime. Black on black crime has been the planet's biggest problem since the early 1300s. Not Muslim extremism and expansion and not white supremacy and colonization. Black on black crime. So the white supremacist wants you to believe he has pillaged and raped his way into sainthood and now is just a loving, caring, benevolent benefactor of all humanity. And it's them blacks you got to look out for. And we all know that the majority of black Americans are hardworking, law abiding citizens, right? Especially if you give them adequate employment and housing, right? But they don't want to give you adequate employment and housing. They'd rather you be a burden instead of a threat. Threats can overthrow systems, burdens can't. You guys commit complete genocides everywhere you go. Nobody's more violent than you. Okay. How about we pose the two-state solution where you FBAs, you go on one side of the country and you let us on our side of the country and we see what portion of the country would survive? Sir, because whenever we- I don't we, think that you guys could survive without us. I really don't. Sir, if that were the case, you guys wouldn't be so hell-bent on destroying anything we do independently. The minute we do something independent, you guys come along and destroy it out of fear. There's a reason why your community had J. Edgar Hoover write in a memo called Cointelpro, there can never be a rise of a black messiah. You had your intelligence agencies go out of their way, and they still do, to stop the progress of any type of black independence, sir. That's not a group Name of Name one thing that we've destroyed from your community. Name sir, one thing. everything, everything we build, you destroy. Whenever we build business districts, your community comes along and deliberately put freeways and train tracks in the middle of our business districts. Whenever we have thriving communities like in Wilmington, North Carolina, the white supremacists come in and destroy it. Uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, you bomb that. Um, so many other places, sir. That's all your community. No, those are mutual. Those were mutual. That was mutual destruction. Wasn't a mutual destruction. These a bunch of white supremacists saw these black millionaires and then got in planes and bombed the people. That wasn't what was mutual. No, nope, most of these race riots were started because one of you guys committed a crime, and it angered mobs. And mobs did, you know, as you say earlier, street justice. I mean, weren't you talking about this last space? Well, your community will falsely accuse a black person of something and use that as an excuse oh, to target all do. the black people. So, but you get mad when people look at white supremacists the same. You try to lone wolf your way out of everything, but yet you treat black people as a collective based on the actions of one person, which is what white supremacy is about. Right. Well, I mean, there's an excuse for everything that you have, but it's been great speaking to you, and I'm glad Black History Month is coming to an end. Why? Why are you glad about that? Oh, Nathaniel. Okay. So Black History Month is just the thought of it is tearing your ass up because Black people are speaking these Black truths out here. And let's get Patrick Nose in here. Let's get Patrick Nose. All right, Patrick knows. Let's see what Patrick knows. Am I on? Yes, Patrick. About the reparations, uh, I don't think black Americans deserve reparations because... Yeah, so I don't want to hear anybody ask anymore, what's wrong with Africa? How come them Africans can't get them Asians and get them Arabs off their back? Because there's your answer right there. Instead of fighting wars to reclaim their homeland, they're over here talking about black Americans don't deserve reparations. Which is none of your fucking business. And where is the brotherhood in it? If y'all were over there fighting in Africa for reparations, guess what? Us black Americans would either support you or wouldn't say a fucking word. 
we would stay out of it. You would not have hundreds and thousands of black Americans voicing their opinions on the affairs of Africans in Africa. Well, I don't think the Africans deserve reparations because they let Nelson Mandela sit in jail for 27, 28 years and, and they could have broke him out. So it's their fault. He sat in there and, and the Africans, they got reparations. They got reparations when they got their independence. You know, when all the countries that were colonizing them and oppressing them left, that was their reparations. Right. <clears throat> or Africa don't deserve reparations because all the all the stuff that the colonizer left behind when he left, that's your reparations. You get to keep some Jeeps. You get to keep some schools he built. You get to keep some houses he built. That's reparations, right? Could you imagine black Americans doing that shit? There is no fucking united diaspora. There are people out here that look just like us that have a vested interest in our failure. Out of jealousy. This shit is some cousin shit. Black Americans, black Africans, black Jamaicans, black Haitians. This is a family of cousins and cousins do get jealous of each other. I'm sorry. The cousins in the projects and the cousin in the single family household is jealous of the cousin that lives in the suburb with both parents. That's just how it is. And you can't forget Jamaicans are English niggas, stuck up Englishmen. Haitians are stuck up French motherfuckers. And Africans is fucking delusional Arabs. And we are Englishmen. That's why we don't get along. Y'all niggas got to stop acting like this is so surprising. And what the fuck, nigga? We not them. Y'all niggas keep saying it, but y'all niggas don't understand what y'all saying. Y'all seem not to understand the words that are coming out of your own mouths. We are not them. And if we are them, they sold us into slavery, nigga. So we wouldn't want to be a part of them anyway, would we? Yeah, apologies come with reparations, nigga. You want us to believe that you sorry, nigga? The, the reparations. Dual citizenship. Besides that, fuck out of here. This you is the... already taken reparations. This is the tether from yesterday. Y'all remember the tether who kept calling in? Now he's pretending to be a white man. This is a West African tether who's very jealous and envious of foundational black Americans. So why I'm do you not keep... jealous. Yes, you are. You're a jealous, angry, musty tether, sir. I was why just are you... asking, a... I was why just asking why... a question. Why are you so jealous of foundational black Americans, sir? I just asked a simple question. Again, you why are you... Taking... You're a tether who fled over here. You want to talk to us about taking from something? You fled from a failed homeland, and you're over here eating off us and got the nerve to talk about what we're taking? Really? You Hello? muted me again. I did not have not touched the mute button, sir. You got DoorDash orders coming in. That's what's muting your phone. I haven't touched the mute button at all, sir. I've not muted you. FBA costs uh, United States government about a trillion dollars a year. You. FBA costs uh, United States government about a trillion dollars a year. Okay. And you cost the United States government an additional $13 billion in deodorant to stop your must. So when you come over here, we don't have to smell you. So what's your point? Dudu Tunde? Okay, he bounced. Dudu Tunde bounced. All right. Boy, these jealous, angry tethers. They are obsessed with us. Man, man, man. All right, let me get um, Ani Usaru in. All right, Ani Usaru in. I think I'm pronouncing your name. Go ahead, Ani. What's going on, brother? I'm good, man. How are you? Doing good, man. First of all, 